Hey everybody, Doug here from 2 Plus Tough. Happy Friday morning to you. Uh, let me get my chat uh, where I can see it. Sorry, I'm a little rushed this morning. Kind of had a slow start. But, uh, you know, honestly, it's just how it is sometimes. <laughs> it is. Um, if you are new to the channel, welcome. This is Wally Reforging, my weekly show. Uh, where we just talk about Games Workshop news, uh, go through painting progress, all this kinds of stuff, and we just have a discussion here at the end. And, you know, honestly, this week is going to be kind of a low-key one simply because there's not a whole lot going on, right? It's the holiday season. All these companies are not really releasing new things per se. They're more just, um, you know, showing you what they basically have for their seasonal offerings. So uh, if I look a little rough, I just got a haircut, and I haven't quite figured out what to do with it when I wake up. So anyway... <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, that's the point of the show. Uh, most of my shows here on the channel are all about, um, you know, lore topics and game stuff. But this is more just a casual get to know you. And if you have any questions, go ahead and throw it in the chat. Uh, the priority goes to people who who chip in a little tip uh, for the stream. Thank you, Spezia, for the uh, for the okay when it comes to uh, sound and stuff. So let's start as I like to do with talking about hobby progress so i got my daylight bulb here and once the light of god stops shining upon thee we'll be able to actually see stuff <laughs> and i can kind of unveil my secret project that i've been working on let's see so if you don't know i have recently picked back up my slaves to darkness man this light almost makes it worse to see okay weird um yeah sorry <laughs> everybody i turned it off um but yeah this is my my slaves to darkness scheme uh, i have my idolater lord on chariot he's my named character and let's see i threw a picture up on the uh, community page as well as all my social media but essentially going for chaos warriors with a very um just kind of classic warhammer scheme i use the color palettes of like a John Blanche thing, but it's not Blanche too because it's all not converted to the nines and all this crazy crap. I like the models the way that they are, and uh, I just wanted to use those colors. So that was kind of my thought process here. And uh, so what did I paint? I painted, well, let me show you here. Uh, a local hobby store had one of these bad boys if you remember this from like two years ago i think it is now it was one of the holiday bundles of many moons ago where you get 10 chaos knights 16 chaos warriors a lord on manicore and a war shrine oh and a chariot so this chariot you're seeing here is actually built from that as well as um, 15 chaos warriors looking good and at the same time came in ownership of this guy and I'm actually going to do a live like unboxing and review of this and the other ones um just just to, people have been asking about that simply because you know the Broken Realm series it doesn't seem to be going away anytime soon and uh people were wondering about these character sets and stuff like that so absolutely Spezia thank you so much support for the lore money for the paint stream thank you so much thank you thank you uh so yeah that's um what I'm looking at. I don't quite know how I'm going to build them yet. I, I have no interest in the, the battalion that turns him into a named character. But, uh, you know, options there. So, yeah. So I get 15 Chaos Warriors and him. So this way, if I ever did a Path to Glory, I'm sure someone uh, wouldn't mind if I did a Path to Glory thing with, like, you know, I'll sub in him for the Lord on Cracker Jack and uh, do that thing. So, yeah, that's kind of how I am... Uh, kind of prioritizing, I guess I should say, that build. Other than that, I've been working on a secret project uh, because me and the Rerolling Ones gang are doing another Christmas gift exchange, so I can't talk about it, but it did take quite a bit of time. So, it is what it is. Let's see. Betsy says, oh, on those 16 Chaos Warriors, uh, if that's the regiment box... Just repackaged into the battle force, which it is. Um, the 16th can be made into a Chaos Lord on foot. Cool. I'll check that out. Uh, and so that's it for hobby progress. What I'd love to do is open this up. What have you all been working on? 
during these last couple weeks. It was a, I was, while you're answering that, I'm just going to like wax poetically here for a hot second. It was a weird week last week. Um, had a lot of family getting sick and that kind of stuff with what's going on in the country and just kind of got overwhelmed. So I needed to take a week off. But uh, thank you to all my incredible patrons and support here on YouTube. Uh, you do really make it all possible um, to even do any of this. So, uh, yeah, that's what I've been working on. That's, what, 17, 18 models, including the Christmas one. And uh, at this point, I'm going to turn over and we're going to chat about some news. Like I said, there's not an immense amount of stuff going on just because it is the holiday season. Oh, we got a question here. Give me one sec. Uh, let's see. Alistair. Hey, look, I got a newbie question. I come from 40K and I started up a Sisters of Battle Crusade force to slowly build up a force. So my question is, what can I do in the AOS range that is like the Crusade? Well, we don't quite have a similar system yet. My thought is they're probably going to, whenever AOS 3rd edition drops, reboot it in such a way that Crusade, some equivalent is there. Um, the closest thing that we have is called Path to Glory, which is a digital-only supplement now. Um, and it's not its not great. I'm just going to throw that out there. It's fantastic if you and your friends are very much on the same page about um, how you like to play your games, as far as like narrative and that kind of stuff. There are some really cool things. It just needs a lot of expansion. Because what makes Crusade fun is that... There's enough crunch, like units getting buffs and scars and all these kinds of things that it builds up a narrative, right? It, it honestly is sort of like a meet between role play and army construction. And Crusade has some unit bonus stuff, but honestly, not a ton. And so, you know, I don't know. It, it just, it's not my favorite format, but I do hope we are getting something like that very, very soon. Been assembling 2,000 points of my first 40k army, Space Marines, and planning out my Sylvaneth army to start next month. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's nice. Got Dan wrapping presents. Uh, let's see. It was an intense week. Been looking up TTS a bunch, and I have a few minis to finish painting up on. Right on. Right on. So, let's hop over to the news here. We are. And if you have anything you want to add, feel free. Just throw it in the chat, and I'll come back to it at the uh, next segment break. But we're looking here, get your game on, Dark Tide Gameplay. Okay, so if you don't know, I'm gonna mute this so we don't blow any eardrums out. Dark Tide is essentially um, Vermintide 2 for 40K, it is my understanding, um, but in a possibly much more intense way because there does seem to be a lot more going on with like kitting out your characters and, and that kind of stuff. And so they're all different classes and you gotta run around and be a maniac and hunt and fight and all this stuff and you're basically my understanding is you're on a hive world and it's infested with chaos however because all hive worlds are the same everything's built on a template in the imperium you get a sense of like someone was like i'm excited for this game because i want to see what necromunda would be like sure as far as i know it's not the planet necromunda but it would be exactly the same that's just the nature of how the Imperium builds things. It's all based on a standard template construct. So, point of all of that is, very excited. I love Vermintide. Uh, had a great time playing it with several folks on the stream, and I just really like it. So yeah, not gonna watch any interviews. If you wanna know interviews about game designers, whatever, I'm just gonna say this. My philosophy with game uh, creation and sales is don't pre-order it, wait for it to come out, and like at least one to two patches to drop, then buy it when they do the apology sale that every game does nowadays. Because if you're looking at folks like Cyberpunk 2077, um, a lot of bad reviews. It's like, well, they just rushed it. So let it drop, get them, catch them on the apology tour as they come back around, and then you'll have a much better game. <laughs> uh, let's see. Spangle Noodle, I don't know if you keep up with it, but Vermintide just posted a new lore story. Oh, that's awesome. I will check that out. Okay, now the other big news is that um, launching today in Warmer 4K, the app, data sheets, updates, and more. Now, I did a video on this, 
And it was quite possibly my worst received video I've ever made. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> um, so I did, yeah, I did a review. And people were, were fine. Nobody was like mean to me. It wasn't directed at me or that. It was just more about the the state of the app and that kind of stuff. Um, a lot of the more discussions to do with the actual paywall methods than anything else, which I understand. So if you want to check it out, it is free this month. You can see what there is there. Uh, let's see. I don't really need a whole list of all the crap that they updated. That doesn't really help me and my audience. But uh, yeah, and that's basically there is Honestly, I love this little export list thing. I waited on Cyberpunk and I'll wait on these price drop after the apology tour. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I, I'm dying to play Cyberpunk. I'm going to give it a month, but I'm dying to play it. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Zozies, uh, thank you for doing a slightly later one. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. Is it later? I guess, I guess it is as opposed to like... Well, I mean, I do it the same time, 10 o'clock, but I moved, and so I'm 10 hours, sorry, two hours closer to you guys, if I'm not mistaken. So that's interesting. Yeah, little bump. So this is now your uh, your regular time, I suppose. Uh, let's see. Now we have also an Age of Sigmar battle plan called the Battle of the Parch, which is the best, um, and it's centered around the Jacob Bugsman model. Now let's see. Um that gives you a little bit of a guide on what to do with specific units. And this is something that kind of did before where it's sort of like a little, um, like a mini army type thing. And it's, it's honestly, it's meant to be entirely for fun just to give you a way to use your characters and that kind of stuff. But the truth is like, I love these little things. Like how much effort did it take for them to throw together this little PDF? You know, I just love that stuff. Um, Jacob Bugman needs an escort through a bone-dry territory inhabited by a band of very thirsty brigands. So, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Uh, let's see. You get... You can double the size of the unit, but if you do so, it counts as two choices instead of one. Uh, let's see. Exactly five units. So, yeah, very small games. Um, I like it. I like it. Honestly, I'm not opposed to this kind of thing. This is the same setup that they have in the open war list building thing um, in the general's handbook, which is a system that I like. They just haven't found an interesting way to implement it yet. And that's kind of where I feel, I don't know. Like I want them to do more with it because I do find it to be an incredibly interesting system. Uh, and so stuff like this, I think is testing the waters to see if they can get a game format set up with you know, regular elite guard champion, and then some wiggle room on how you combine those things uh, therein. So anyway, there's not a whole lot to talk about here. It's just it's just a reason to, to put Jacob Bugsman on the table. Uh, but I thought it was interesting. So it is what it is. All right. Now, Warhammer Adventures continue in February. Uh, let's see. Tecton Craft Studios. Have you seen Heroes of the Hinterlands in the new White Dwarf? Nope. I put in a pre-order at the uh, beginning of the month and it still has not shipped. So I'm waiting on everything. Still can't even talk about Direchasm or Warcry stuff. Pretty bummed about that, to be honest with you. Wish I had just saved my money and gone to my local store. Is what it is. Uh, Warhammer Adventures, if you don't know, is the um, stories and books that are centered for getting new kids into the hobby. Like, younger kids specifically. Um, and they're like little kids adventures and that kind of stuff. I have read, I read the first Age of Sigmar one, um, just to kind of get a sense of like the age range it's targeted at. I think they're wonderful. I like the art in them, you know, obviously <laughs> like I don't, I shouldn't have to say this, but none of it's canon. Um, if you're looking for important plot points about the nature of reality and the broad spectrum of how good black library authors are, probably don't judge it by these. But they are quite entertaining, you know, they're, they're stuff that I, uh, I would absolutely get a nephew if I had one at the right age, but unfortunately my nephew's a little bit too young. So, yeah. GW is going to buy Battlescribe, I'm calling it. Jack, I disagree, because their list builder is actually quite awesome. The problem is that if they bought Battlescribe, they would still just put it behind the same paywall and it wouldn't matter at all. <laughs> That's all. The problem, like, all those little glitches and stuff, you can fix those. But the problem is, 
access to information for the dollar value they want. That's my, that's what I'm calling. <laughs> so anyway, I think they're really cool. I would love to read this one. The Plague of the Nurglings. Like, because, you know, the stories are centered around kids and Nurglings are like knee high. So I just want a scene where like all three of these characters are just like, I don't know, what do you call it? Um, Can-can dancing where you kick your legs up and down, like just kicking and plowing through a whole bunch of nurglings, just rah, little dudes flying all around. I would love it. And um, this is an interesting one. I didn't see it coming. So they dropped an FAQ for several 40K books because they've been throwing them out in this like rapid succession, okay? It, honestly, it's a breakneck speed for a publishing house. So they had... Um, uh, Space Wolves, oh, what are they? Space Wolves, Blood Angels? Is that these guys? No, that's Death Watch. Uh, but Blood Angels did recently come out as well. And Imperial Armor, which is the book that has all the Forge World stuff. Um, let's see. Anyway, and in addition to that, they also have Crypt Hunter and Blitz Bowl, which are two. It's very interesting that these two are tagged on here because these aren't available like at most places you have to go to like in america we go to barnes and noble like a bookstore chain um where they're kind of throwing things out there to to seed people into getting into uh the games workshop you know hobby line and introduce them as a company and that kind of stuff um i'm kind of interested in the crypt hunter one because i have played this one and i just don't feel like there i didn't have a lot of questions <laughs> like let's see here yeah, I feel like a lot of these were just answered. Do, do models block line of sight for Stormcast Eternal attacks? It's interesting. I feel like I never had these questions, but, you know, someone will ask, ask them. Uh, do you ever draw a new power card during a game? Interesting. Okay. So, I mean, there's not a whole lot, honestly, here to be super into. It's a very simple game. Um... With, with quite a bit of fun. Like, uh, simple is not a bad thing. Simple just means my wife, who doesn't play games very often, picked it up in about, I think, three or four rounds. So we played two games, right? One was just a very slow walkthrough where we showed each other's hands and kind of went through it. And then on the second game where she was playing by herself, um, like fully playing, she she grasped it how to win and what she needed to do i think on like turn two turn three something like that it was it was pretty good like i mean in terms of you know having rules communicate exactly how the game flows and getting people thinking about ways to like really engage it i thought it was a great game and uh the last article is basically just um a whole bunch of sales stuff <laughs> again these are all the games that aren't really available anywhere except like you know, bookstores, whatever that might be. I don't know what you guys have in the UK. We have, like I said, Barnes and Noble. Um, here's the Crypt Hunter game. I think it's cool. Like I have a copy. I saved it. I'm, I have no interest in painting the models from it, but uh, yeah, combat arena seems interesting. I've never seen anybody talk about it to be honest with you, but it looks cool. And Dreadfane. Um, someone, if you know. How does Dreadfane fit into Warhammer Underworlds? Because I know they cycle out cards. So if you were to get into Underworlds with this, I feel like this is a question for Spezia because you always come in hot with the uh, the uh, Underworlds knowledge. Like, are these things going to be out of date? Are they, are they like a staple in the game now because of, you know, they're used as an outreach, like an onboarding product? So I don't know. I'm interested. But that's all there is because like I said during the holidays they're not really introducing new products they just they just kind of want to make sales right I mean obviously every company wants to make sales but it's not about new things it's about packaging things and, and that kind of stuff so yeah it's been I won't lie to you I, I want to give my thoughts here we're going to do some real talk unscripted two plus tough talk there was a time probably like a year and a half ago where um, I was having a discussion with some friends and they were like, I don't see how any company could um, compete with Games Workshop. Like, how are any of these other games getting by? And what I had said at the time was like, just wait because 
this is how the market works. Someone comes up with something, they started winning, right? They had the social media game, the production cues were banging this, you know, the YouTube tutorials were awesome. But eventually cracks will start to show and other companies will step in and fill those cracks. And so what I'm saying is, this has been a rough year for a lot of companies and um, the ones who survive will do very well. The reason I say this is because Games Workshop, I feel, has been kind of stumbling a bit lately when it comes to knowing what their audience needs in terms of specifically the 40K app. I don't I don't know why, like, um, an employee, uh, you know, just, just kindly asked if I could review it. It wasn't like a, you know, a mandate or a contract or anything like that. And I said, oh, absolutely, because I didn't have it before. I was happy to. Um... And it just, the the community reaction that I got from that, again, none of it was immature, over the top. It was all very reasonable and polite. But it was just like, there's a gap. And some company's going to come and fill that gap. And whether it's Corvus Belly with Infinity or, uh, what, Mantic with uh, Kings of War, all these different game companies, they're still out there. So even though I focus a lot on GW stuff here, if you like those other games, those other companies, go support them. Go go see who did well during all of this. So, yeah, let's see here. Oh, I got a question. Uh, a reply. Thank you, buddy. Uh, Dreadfane is an optional expansion, uh, primarily used in Night Vault and Beast Grape. About half and half on tournament legality. Uh, I have to ask. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, that's kind of what I thought. I thought it's been out for a bit. So that's kind of an interesting thing. Um, so that's it for me. What I'm going to do is go back to the downward cam here. And uh, I don't, I'm going to try to do this so I don't have to, you know, put the light of God in your guys' eyes again. Let's see if I can adjust this light to where it works for me. I think that'll work. The, the, the shadow you see in the dead center is actually the webcam itself. All right, so let me get my uh, trademarked super dirty water. <laughs> uh, let's see. I wish GW added some more boxed games to AOS. I agree, and I, I wonder why they don't. I mean, I'm sure part of it is they simply um, don't have as many of those models in their warehouse. Like, you know... the. 40k is their big cash cow, so I'm sure that there were times where they, oh, we have too many of X model. Okay, well, then it's time to throw those models inside of a, uh, you know, a, a box of some kind. Okay. Actually, you know what? We're not going to paint today. We're going to build some stuff. Because it just occurred to me, the only things I built and primed were the Chaos Warriors and the Chariot. Because I wanted to pace myself a bit and not get super burned out. So we got this, let me just put that off to the side. Something like Adeptus Dicanicus with God Beasts would be cool. Oh, that'd be rad. Yeah. It's, you know, I feel like I, someone, um, someone please tell me if I'm wrong. But I feel, I was recently rereading the uh, campaign book God Beasts and, uh, for Age of Sigmar Realm Gate Wars. I feel like they initially made God Beasts sound like there were very few of them. Like there's like 12, you know, in the whole universe. All these things. And then I actually listened to uh, Realm Slayer because uh, I have gotten so many requests to cover Gotrek that I finally broke down. And um, was like, fine, I'll listen to it, whatever. Uh, so anyway, listen to Realm Slayer, and there's like a, a, a minor god beast's first child of Volcatrix kind of a thing in there. And I was like, wait a minute. There's a lot of these guys. They're everywhere. They're in every nook and cranny. They're not special. <laughs> That's basically how I felt. Uh, I'm going to do a Chaos Lord on Manticore, I think. Because I did the Sorcerer when I had my last army. And, um... Uh, oh, no, wait. 
I want to do the Sorcerer because I want to do Winds of Chaos. Yes. Never mind. Uh, let's see. Huge fan of the text integration display on the webcam. Oh, thank you. Yeah, always trying to uh, get better. You know, uh, you know, everyone knows the next stop for a YouTuber is to have about 10,000 different, like, stretch goals for donations and all that kind of stuff. You know, they're really annoying things with, like, animations that clog the entire, uh, you know, picture and all that kind of stuff. It's just the way the biz works. <laughs> Zozi's cough magnets. I... I... Here's my thing. Okay. When it comes to magnets... I am an American who loves instant gratification. <laughs> you say magnets, I see time, and I got no time. <laughs> okay. So let me get base. And probably would help to have the mana core sprue as well. <laughs> this way is not just a chaos sorcerer riding on broken dreams. Uh, let's see. Lunch break. Introducing some of my students to your channel. Keep up the good work. Oh, that's awesome, Tyler. What, um, if you don't mind me asking, what age range are your students? Just, just so I know. I'm always curious because I had one guy be like, oh yeah, we're in college and we watched your video. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. It's not like I have a deep insecurity about my own peers judging me harshly for this. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool, cool, cool. <laughs> <laughs> high school oh awesome awesome that's important because they have to get out into the world knowing that people are weird and have weird hobbies and that um no one should tell them to feel dumb about anything <laughs> you know kind of like the exact situation i just described uh let's see. hello it's been a while since you last able to catch a stream yeah vince what's up i think i already know but what happened to ma tribes Technically, they are still with me. All kinds of hail and hearty. Um, I haven't cleared them out, but it is on my to-do list for the week. Uh, is to throw them up on the eBay. And uh, you know what it is? I painted uh, a few more of the gluttons. And I looked at them and I was like, I, I do not love this scheme. So what I'm going to do is put the Maw Tribes away. Because the whole plan, if you guys remember, was I bought a few things to fill out and turn my um, Warcry Warbands into a full Slaves to Darkness list since the Idolaters dropped. That was always part of the, the plan. And then I started painting these Chaos Warriors, and I was like, I actively enjoy this. Um, so, I don't know. It just, I wasn't feeling it with the, the Ogres, and then I was like, you know, but I am legitimately enjoying my my... Uh, super sloppy and easy, but turns out looking like I put a lot of work into it, <laughs> a version of Chaos, um, which I love quite a bit. Um, like I said, it's kind of somewhat based on John Blanche style stuff. Uh, you know, I say based on it. It's his color palette. It's nothing else, right? I didn't do any kind of conversions or anything like that. I'm thinking... Um, when I start tackling leaders that I'm really excited to use, uh, like for example, I want to have like a really kitted out gaunt summoner type thing, then I'll go into the, the conversion territory, but like, honestly, Chaos Lord on a mana core or whatever, not like super pumped, uh, but something like the Lord on Crackerjack, absolutely, I'll, I'll, I'll convert the heck out of that guy. So, uh, let's see. Butterfly as much as you want, Doug. It's good to see you happy. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. That means a lot to me. People make fun. I don't know. I think people are, are slowly getting more on board with the idea of this is just what Doug does, you know? And all my friends had to have that moment. Jack certainly did where he's just like, huh, well, it's just how he enjoys his hobby. And I just always appreciated that. And I see you're in the chat, uh, chat Jack. What's up, buddy? Hopefully I'll get able to stream with you sometime in February when things die down. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it's um, it's been going well. And yes, I am building my second Chaos Sorcerer Lord on Menticore. Uh, because true to form, I said that the Winds of Chaos spell was awesome. 
before it was awesome. Now it actually is. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I have a video coming out this week. I'm just I'm just chatting to my own brain here. So if you guys have a topic you want me to chat about, throw it in there, and we'll absolutely get to it. But uh, I have a video coming out this week from a little lore blip that's in the Slaves to Darkness book that I found when I was trying to come up with like uh, inspiration for this army. And there's one that I just, I fell in love with uh, called The Abandoned. And it's just people who are like really freaking mad at Sigmar for locking the doors to his ear and leaving them with chaos. And I was like, oh, that's the best. What a great motivation. So I won't spoil anymore, but uh, my, my paint scheme is loosely, loosely based off of that. I say loosely, uh, mainly because their paint scheme is never shown. <laughs> so it's about as loose as you can get. <laughs> Off to work. Have a great day. See you later, man. My main factions are Ogres, Slaves to Darkness, and Legions of Nagash. You know, I will be honest with you. I was never tempted by Legions of Nagash until I watched Warhammer Weekly this last week. Um, to the point where I was like legit. I went to the um, Mantic games. Uh, they make uh, Kings of War. I went to their website and I just stared for a while at their zombie kit and I was like, I could, I could build an army of zombies. Because if I go deaf, that's the only thing I want. I want zombies. And I guess to a lesser extent, yes, I want vampires, but I mean, I'm not like, I don't know, I'm not vamp crazy. I don't need a bunch of them. I don't need a full range or a full army. I just want a few because I think they're a very iconic villain. Like, I, I really do like the more traditional vampire stuff. Um... But yeah, so come join us, Doug. The corpse is plenty. I know. I knew the second I had that thought. My second thought was, oh man, I know what at least I know at least two legions players that are gonna like come join us. One of us, and you are one of them. The other one was um, uh, the channel, Mister Mephisto, <laughs> because he is also a, a very uh, strong death advocate. I think he's more of the Bone Reapers, though. If I'm not mistaken, I can't quite recall. Hey Doug, I know you just did the starter review, but I love your, I love that you're doing uh, warriors. The shields giving them mortal wound save is dank, and in blocks of fifteen they keep removal saves. Oh yeah, yeah yeah. So the first slaves to darkness army that I had, the one that was on the channel, um, I bought all of those used. Like I got them basically at a garage sale. <laughs> um, paid very very little for them, but they were already built, and he built them with double hand weapons. And I had to pry them off of square bases and all this kinds of stuff. Like he was just an old fancy player who was like, you know, I want someone to get some use out of him. And so with this iteration, I was like, okay, um, I'm not opposed to buying built models, of course, because I hate building models. But I'm only going to buy them if it's the actual loadouts and everything that I want. Like it has to be perfect. And I was like, you know what? I want some freaking shields. <laughs> Mainly because I remember playing the old Slaves to Darkness and, and the abilities with like shields and that kind of stuff. It didn't change, right? They still get a chance to save against Mortal Wounds, which is amazing compared to their basically copycat equal, which is the Liberators. Um, and I was like, you know, this is rad. Um, the Chaos Shields were incredible on my Knights because Knights don't have an option to not have the shield. And so the whole time I was pushing around Chaos Warriors that had double hand weapons, and, and you know, the re-rolling hit rolls is good, but there's about 30 ways to get that in this army. And so um, I was like, hmm, that's pretty stinking rad on these knights. I bet it would be pretty good also on a block of, like, ungodly number of Chaos Warriors. So yeah. Let's see. I bribe some Bone Reapers so I can be at the back of the corpse cart. <laughs> Not sure I can take the title of a death player. That would involve actually rolling dice. Not in 2020 it doesn't, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> also, most of the people who talk about this game online never play it. Actually, I shouldn't say that. Not that they never play it. But certainly a lot of the more competitive focused stuff, it's like, have you all actually won anything? It's like, no. But you don't have to win anything to know about the game. It's like, that's true. Totally respect it. It's just, 
you gotta you gotta put things in perspective you know there's no reason to feel like other people can't have an opinion you're a deaf player zozies i saw you're in a gash <laughs> doug don't give her her at she lives <laughs> Love it. I also never finish paint projects. <laughs> uh, it's funny. Oh, it's okay. I can't finish, you know, armies. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, I th thought I missed a question. I'm not seeing one here. If I missed your question, go ahead and let me know. The Rain Man, last couple of times I played, I tossed out 80 skellies and six zombies. Uh, lots of fun to just throw models on the table. See, that's the thing to me is like my, my criticism with Legions of Nagash as a book is that like people crack the code pretty easily about like what's best in it. And I say best in a, in a strictly competitive sense, which is obviously not my jam. Uh, as far as here's what you do. You get your big blocks of skellies because they have, they're reasonably hard to kill. Um, and you throw them on an objective and then you just keep bringing them back basically and my thing is the amount of effort it takes to get rid of those skeletons is so great that it's no fun to play against at least the times that i have played against it and so my solution was simply say why don't we just play um hmm, which tail do i want instead of using uh skeletons use zombies because at that point your opponent is like killing droves of things right and you're you're pouring models off the table like they're just dying in droves and it's super fun they feel like they're achieving something and yes as the legions player i get to summon them right back but that's so cool like, and it's just more stuff to slaughter and so at the end of the day your opponent like feels like they're doing something and i feel like that's that's the thing about skeletons that i that irks me is like when i was trying to hack through them i didn't feel like i was doing anything you know, when I had Iron Jaws, like, you know, uh, the last time I played with them, I was just like, you know, I should, I should be taking more dudes off the table. These are skeletons. Uh, let's see. Uh, Rayman, I've had a game at home with my wife, brother, and friends with Crohn's disease. Uh, I can't actually get out to a local shop or tournament. I have to stay within 30 feet of a bathroom. Hey, and that's a... That's a real life problem, man. I, I totally understand. There's been uh, several folks who, I mean, honestly, locally, we have people who um, can't go to game stores because of like crippling social anxiety, which I I get socially anxious. I can't imagine it being to a point where like, you can't really like do anything. So power to you. I'm glad your friends and family are supportive enough to uh, get some games in with you. Good on, you're loved. Well, let's see. I have over 90 models to paint this Christmas, and I'm probably going to be... Not probably going to be done until April. Oh, man. I decided I'm not... Uh, well, with the exception of maybe, like, a hero or something like that, just to fill out the list, um, I don't honestly need much more than, than what I have, simply because, you know, I got the, the big old army box, and um, what is it? Army box and then the chariot set, that kind of stuff. I got a whole lot of stuff to paint. Not to mention all the terrain. My god, I got so much terrain to paint. Alright. Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> F you, Mark. I love the name. Uh, what's the easiest AOS armies to convert to 40k and fantasy well without question it is uh demons because they are quite literally already in all those games um what else would i say besides just demons uh, let's give you some other good ideas um ko i don't know what you would really use them as in 40k um maybe like a air centric guard army hmm Anybody else got any ideas? Things that you, you know, easy armies to convert. I'm gonna say Ossiark. <laughs> just paint Ossiark Bone Reapers, just hose them down with silver and be like, Necrons! And then just dare someone to argue with you. Uh, 
Oh, there it goes. I had the tail upside down. That's why it didn't fit, Doug. Uh, let's see. Any, rec blah, blah, blah. Any recommendations? Oh, wait, oh, I missed a question. I uh, just got two boxes of blue horrors. Nice. think I've got too many demons right going right now with demonettes, flamers, and nerglings. Never enough. Never enough demons. Any recommendations for Gloom Spike Gits models to buy? Um, chance, it depends on what you got um, already. Because I feel like Gloom Spite is one of those armies where it rewards you for picking a direction and just going to the nth degree on it, right? If you want to have like a squig army, you have a squig army, right? Don't worry about anything else, right? Just, you know, lean in hard. And then, you know, after you've built a list that can really focus on squigs, then you can kind of like take a beat and be like, you yeah, know, do I want anything else? And then change course and, and go from there. So it kind of depends on what you wanted to do. So if you answer that for me, I will give you some input. But to me, honestly, um, if someone were to come up to me and be like, Doug, you have an endless budget. Build a, a Gloom Spite army. That would be fun. I'm going all in on, on the squigs. Like a thousand percent. <laughs> They're just absurd. Okay, don't need that. Do you want fun... <laughs> You want fun or gobos or power game army? <laughs> the Gobapalooza is some of the best models that Games Workshop has made straight up. Every time I made a list I wanted to play, the rules changed, so I had to rewrite. Got my 2K list done. Oh, interesting. Um, Lionheart, I want to start Allegiance and Gash Army, but I'm waiting for them to maybe get some sort of new slash update. You know... I was the same way. I, for the longest time, was like, I don't really use, um, you know, proxy models or anything like that, um, or, you know, other companies, that kind of thing, until I moved out here, and I'm like, I'm nowhere near a Games Workshop store. I'm in no danger of being told I can't use, you know, those models or whatever. So I'm like, now I'm like, hmm, you know who has fantastic death models at a very reasonable price? Mantic. Go to Mantic Miniatures, look up Kings of War, check out their death stuff. The aesthetic just matches GW's pound for pound, and they look so much better. Let's see, 56. Where are you is? 58. It's here. I hate looking for sprue bits. Mainly because I know I'm staring right at it and I can't find it. <laughs> uh, let's see, so I'm looking for a water fur. Which apparently looks identical to this one even though it's labeled 58. I honestly think that's it. I think the sprue or directions may be mislabeled. Let's see if it fits. This is why you dry fit some stuff sometimes. Yeah, it looks right. All right. Uh, let's see. Mantic has good options. Sadly, I do not like Mantic Dwarves. Yeah, the dwarves and their version of, of um, ogres I never quite cared for. But, you know, it's one of those things like, you know, every, every company's going to have models you like and don't like. I know that if I was uh, judging companies by, say, I don't know, non-IP infringing rat men, Games Workshop would not rank high on my list just simply because of the way, like, they have so many units that are ancient and, and that kind of stuff. They just, it just needs a rewrite, a little update with uh, Skaven models for sure, as many people are quick to say. Just know your audience when you play and try to show up with two lists and ask your opponent whether I want to have fun game or competitive game. Sure, and that's the thing, like, um, Gloom Spite, I, I, I understand that it's not the most competitive army uh, in terms of like backbreaking stuff, but you can create 
one heck of a not fun experience for someone if they're not ready for competitive gloom spike kits because if you flood that table with netters your opponent is going to like just walk away you're just like it's just not fun but you know you know if you're trying to win an event that's that's the kind of stuff that'll get you there so no shame uh, let's see now i need 61 and 62 Are there specific color schemes for the skeletons for different legions in Legion of Nagash? Um, no, not really Age Slanish. Um, in the book, it's actually kind of cool. They they don't give you like a set um, paint scheme at all, but they do mention in their lore bit that like they tend to take on aspects of whatever realm they're from, and so like their examples were like, oh, if they're from Giran, they sometimes have like moss growing all in the cracks of the bones and. If they're from a uh, realm of metal, they might have bejeweled like chest pieces and that kind of stuff and rare minerals. So I thought that was kind of cool, but no, there's no um, no like true paint scheme given, which I quite like because honestly, Legions is such a sweeping book. Like it's trying to represent like death as a faction in just about any circumstance in any realm. It's a very ambitious, like from a lore perspective. Uh, book more so than even cities which has more units but they're tied to very specific places um whereas yeah i feel like legions is just like a very very big blunt canvas where you can do whatever you want bigger than most factions i would say or start a thousand projects never finish them all hey oh zozy That, that was me throwing Jacob a bone. That looks right. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's see. Keep up painting the slaves, though. Love the paint scheme. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, let's see. I was actually on the Canadian GW site and I was really mad for a second because I thought they raised prices on Lehman Russes. <laughs> I did that before. I um, I was like, what the heck is going on with Games Workshop? And I was like, oh, wait a minute. I am in New Zealand Games Workshop. Like, they use fun bucks. No, I'm good. I don't need that. <laughs> uh, let's see. There really no more directions i guess you kind of have to know what the rest of them is before you build the main right mm -hmm. chaos lord of mana core oh here we go okay yeah there's the main part i was like there's still like huge gaps of this guy's skull missing i was very confused <laughs> uh let's see Oh, I'm glad I can make you laugh. Just look at the chat now. Uh, do you have a favorite brand for paint? I kind of, I kind of uh, bounce around quite a bit, to be honest with you. Um, mostly I use GW stuff just because I like, honestly, the consistency. Like I had problems with Army Painter where I would go, um, you know, I'd buy, say, for example, their yellow. And when I used that up, I would go buy the exact same yellow and it would look different. Um, so I had trouble like that before with a few companies. Um, Reaper Paints uh, had a few that just came out really chalky. I don't know, just kind of a just kind of a tough go with some of them. Um, so the consistency, honestly, to me is more important because I, I don't get to the game store very often. Not that any of us do anymore. <laughs> but uh, you know, it's like when I go out there and I throw a couple bucks this way, like I just want to come home and know that uh, I can just play with my paints. So all I need to do. Okay, got it. I'm using a different face and everything. He's gonna be a different bro from the last one that I did. And uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and start there. Vinci, oh buddy, thank you so much. Um, Harcuron, question mark. I like options, but I don't know how they play. Harcuron. So that would be, let me just pull up, I know I read so much stuff for that 
uh, supplement. Give me just a hot second. Let me just pull it up and we can walk through that together. I'm more than happy to. There's a Hark Huron section. Hark Huron, actually, okay. Yes, okay, I'm sorry, I got this. I, I know that I kept in my brain getting them and, and Mist Haven uh, melded together. So yeah, Hark Huron is the one that really does double down on Dark Elves and allows you to bring in um, all kinds of stuff. Let's see. One and four can be a, a Daughters of Cain unit, which is awesome. Um, command ability, make an example. At the start of your Battleshock phase, pick one friendly Hark Huron unit, wholly within 12 inches of a Hark Huron hero. Uh, one model is slain, but all units within 18 inches of the targeted unit ignore Battleshock. That can be incredible, uh, especially because at the Dark Elf army roster, like all those units, they are all horde units, and they will all die in droves. So I, I think, I do believe this will be a rather horde-based army. Um, I think Scourge Privateers and Order Draconis do bring something to the table in terms of sheer board presence and, and numbers, raw numbers. Ugh, almost lost his face. That's okay. <laughs> Here's the... Here we go. Little tiny bit where the sprue connected. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I, I would honestly say a lot of it you're looking at debuffing your opponent and playing really hard to the objectives. So you're probably not going to go first. Just, just throwing that out there. There's not a lot of battalions here that are working for you. Um. Let's see. Life taker during a shooting phase. Um, honestly, yeah. I, I Honestly, I believe it's more about letting you take different models that you want than anything else. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. Yeah, that's what I would probably say. Focus on horde horde stuff. You got to just outnumber your opponent on objectives. Uh, turn one, I would probably say throw a command point into auto running six if you don't roll it naturally. Get units up, be aggressive, and then just outnumber and grind down uh, your opponent. Because if you look at a lot of the war scrolls that are involved in those sub factions, like the um, Shadow Blades, Courage Privateers, Darkling Covens, Serpentis, all that stuff, um, they get really, really good bonuses for taking a lot of dudes. And so uh, that's something I, I think that army wants to lean into. Without so much as like forcing you to commit to one of them for your entire faction. Let's see, throw on this guy. Oh. Ah. It's alright, we're good. It's fine, we're fine, everything's fine. How are you? Okay, there he is. What do we got next? 43 and 45. Squigs are the best. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. Good morning from New Zealand. Hey, hey, Mitch. What's up? So, yeah, just having ourselves a little hobby hang, just chilling this morning, keeping it rather low-key. I, uh, I didn't have a subject prepared because, like I said, I a little scrambled from last week, but uh, I'm getting back into it. Okay, we need 39 right away. Uh, let's see. What are the battle line options? I have the Dars of Cain book, but not the cities. Do they get temples, battalions, or just specific ones? Um, so, let's see. My understanding, do they get temples slash battalions? So they wouldn't get battalions because I believe the battalions are locked to specific cities. The only battalion they have available to them is the one that's narratively in 
Broken Realms Moravi. If I'm not mistaken, someone correct me please if I'm wrong, because there might be an FAQ or something that I didn't read. As far as what they have options to uh, when it comes to cities, that I can answer if you give me just a moment. I'll pull up the list build here. But yeah, anything that's battling the cities. So you're going to be looking at like Scourge Privateers. You're going to be looking at... No, I guess they're not cities, are they? Or not... Um, battle line are they? Let's see. Let's see. List builders. This, I'm going to give you a peek behind the curtain. This is how I figure all this stuff out to make sure I'm not just talking out of my butt. Select a faction. Cities of Sigmar. And units. And we can just look here on the side. So they would have bleak swords, dark shards, which are dread spears. These are your huge units that you would want for um, dark elf type things. And uh, breaker longbeards. Depending on, you'll unlock more options depending on who your general is. Um, is it Wanderer General? Shadow Warriors can be the Shadow Blades General. I don't remember that unit, Shadow Warrior. Okay, okay. I, no, I just thought of it. Um, Scourge Runner Chariots as Battle Line would be kind of rad. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so there's a few options. They have like two or three options for each faction here. Free Guild, Human General, Battle Line. Um, executioners can be Battle Line if you have a Darkling Coven General, which is an interesting idea. Um, executioners are pretty rad, actually. One of the things I was looking at was actually the Misthaven rules, where they can like deploy a unit off the table and have them come in right up in someone's face, and like, executioners doing that would be rad. Um, yeah, so I'm not going to tell you which one to do, but I will say there are some good options because Blackheart Corsairs, Blackguard, all those things, they're just, they're, they can be so nasty on the tabletop. Uh, let's see. Small Town, hey, good evening from Scotland. Hey, buddy. Thank you so much for joining us. Just hanging out, answering some questions, living, laughing, loving. I used to say that ironically, and now I'm just like, it's just locked in my brain. And it annoys the heck out of my wife. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay. So we got to do. Hey, there we go. That's an awkward fit. I forgot. I. Well, I guess I didn't build him the first time. Yeah, that's right. I was like, I don't remember him being that awkward to get the knee joint in, but I didn't build him before. Small town. Hey, Doug, just had a question if that's okay. Yeah, go ahead, buddy. Ask anything. Ask away. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, question. Do you think big blocks of beef on your warriors or spread them out into fives and run your war cry stuff? Um, for me personally, uh, I would probably go units of 10 chaos warriors and then have untamed beasts run forward. So I want something, yeah, I don't, not quite MSU with the five mans because I think they dissolve pretty easily. Um, but something a little bit with a little bit more heft, I would say. It's probably a good call. Okay, buddy, your question here, small town. Um, Doug, I'm taking part in your lore comp. What styles are we meant to write in? Novel esque or more overview like Broken Realms Marathi? So I leave it open for anybody. Um, so you can literally write in anything and it will be just fine. The reason I do that is because, yeah, some people do prefer some literary styles over others. Um, and I just try to be accommodating to all of that. Man, these do not want to fit in there. Uh, so you can do whatever. It's like last year when we did this, I had options for all different kinds of things. Um, and I'm not sure if that really helps you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, anything you want to write in, you are welcome to. Yeah. 
Okay, there we go. I was like, this just is not sitting right. Okay, looks good. Sorry about that. I had to go quiet for a second. Um, but yeah, so I, I had some some people wrote like full little like self-contained stories with characters that there's no like model for. And then um, our Iron Jaws story that we did, I mean, it was basically just he played games and kind of craft this narrative over like a year. And then he just compiled them into a short story, essentially, which is a really cool thing. Like I had never even considered that. Um so yeah, you can do whatever you want. And I try uh, to to grade them equally. So yeah, or I guess like equally, I take a mix. You know, I take a mix. I bring those to the patrons and all those guys. And yeah, let's see. Burp. Hey Doug, uh, what army do you main? Um, it depends on what month you ask me. <laughs> if you're asking me right now, I guess technically, uh, Slaves of Darkness. Um, but I, if, if you're not a, a long time follower of the channel, basically I rotate armies like every three months or something like that. Just because I like painting projects more than I ever really play. And honestly, no one's really playing right now, so... Not a huge rush there to have a, a full, you know, 2,000 points or whatever. It's also hard because I just moved to the area, so I don't, like, know people enough to be like, hey, can I just come into your house? <laughs> Random person, you know? That's not going to bode well. Uh, let's see. So it's okay to have a bigger unit of warriors for Chaos Warriors? Specifically, I would say absolutely. They're great. Chaos Warriors are great. Yeah, I don't... Um, honestly, so I, I just don't play with models that I don't like the look of, to be super real. Uh, and I have never liked the look of the Marauders. I had some in my last army. I had one big unit of... Uh, I think it was 40... And then, and then I just very clearly made the decision to myself with this redo of the Slaves of Darkness to be like, I am, I refuse. I refuse to ever paint another Marauder <laughs> until they give me a better kit. Or they just let me, you know, take my Slaves, uh, my uh, Warcry Warbands as Marauders, which they kind of did in Broken Realms Marathi. And in the sense that they gave all the cultist stuff, um the same essential rules. Or at least the important rule of auto-charging at least seven, which is crazy. Uh, let's see. 49 over here. That looks like it. Forty-seven. Uh, let's see. Oh, Benny tried. I'm here. And Doug is doing Slaves to Darkness again. Yes, because all of nature is cyclical. We just, we're just we just stuck in an endless cycle. <laughs> Maybe Nurgle's got it right. I should do a maggotkin army. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, man. I got a message from someone who straight up told me like, oh man, the, the rate at which you cycle through armies stresses me out. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry, man. The whole point of the channel is just to relax. I just, just wanted to like have stuff to paint. <laughs> oh man. Uh, my Astro Militarium is gonna lose every objective game, but I'm fine with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I am definitely one of those people who, um, as long as I feel like I was playing the game, I don't mind losing it. Like, the only time of losing that I don't like, or when I get salty, is, like, when there's so many negative, you know, to hit modifiers, or, you know, you just feel like you're rolling dice and nothing's happening. That's the thing where you lose me, where I'm like, okay, 
like, I don't care if I lose this game, but like, I need to walk away from this table feeling like something happened and just rushing up against a wall of beef and not doing anything about it is not, not that. <laughs> Uh, let's see, 55, here we go. We're almost done, actually. He's This guy snaps together pretty quick. I will say, as much as I love the newer kits that Games Workshop has been putting out in the last, like, three, four years, there is just something purely nice about how simple these older kits are to put together. Like, I, I built that whole thing of Chaos Warriors in, like, two seconds, because they're all just, like... Front, back, left arm, right arm, head. <laughs> You're like, oh, okay, so this is this can be really easy. Uh, 51. And wasn't there a thing? 52. Mm, oh, little shield plate. All right. Shout out to the black coach. That was nice to build. Oh, yeah, yeah. Was it really? It looks like it would be complicated, to be honest with you. Um, I So I met a, a local guy here for, for Warcry um, named Rob, and, and he is just this, the coolest, sweetest person. And we were playing Warcry, and he had uh, a spirit host on the table. And I was like, hey, listen, how, how was it to build that? Because I've, I've heard the rumors that they're pretty awful to put together. And um, he was like, it was not fun. <laughs> he just straight up was just like, sigh. <laughs> um, and then I got a text later in the week that I was like, I gave up on one of them. <laughs> I was like, dang. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's pretty hard. Um, I, feel like, I feel like something's wrong with the design of the model. If a unit of three models breaks a person... <laughs> Like, I feel like it's, I feel like soul breaking should require more models, right? If it's like a unit of 40 Skaven that are all really complicated to put together, I'm like, okay, that's allowed to be soul crushing, but not like, not like three dudes. <laughs> okay, so with that, and then we got 53. Hmm. Give me just a hot second here. I'm trying to figure out how this goes in because the picture is at a weird angle. I don't know why they thought that that would be helpful. Ah, there it is. Okay. I was like, just looking at it, I was like, that is not a clear image at all. It doesn't even look like the right part. But you're making a saddle. I get it. It's easy when you know how. Okay. I don't know if anyone got that reference, but uh, I used to play a lot of Fable, like when that game first dropped on, gosh, I think I had an Xbox. And I just remember walking through the village and like somebody said out loud, very loudly within the game, it's easy when you know how. And it's just like, yeah, bro, everything is. What are you talking about? That's the whole freaking point of learning. And it just struck me as a very dumb statement, but like, Villagers just kept saying that over and over again. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, okay. Black Coach was an absolute dream. That's awesome. Ever assembled Malifo? Some of those are legendary difficulty. I have never. No. No, 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 no. I haven't. Um, honestly, I like the game of Malifo. I really love the setting, if I'm honest with you. Uh, so it's a game that has always like kind of interested me. Um, but I have never actually tried to build any of their models. Boom. Like a glove. Alpha Minis are cool looking, but painful. Glue all the wrist. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Cause they got some dainty arms. I mean, I've, I've seen, I've seen some of the models, even though I haven't built a bunch. But it's kind of like how we all looked at the um, the literally three inch long spear that's on the Lumineth Spearman, and we went like, <laughs> lol, <laughs> like just just like that's that's gonna be a pain. 
and we, you could just kind of tell sometimes. I suppose they're more of a pain when it comes to transportation, but you know what I mean. Just looking to see where the connection points are. There we go. Yes, that is a manticore worthy of, I don't really know what to call my army <laughs> quite yet. Floaty bags of ether gold and support struts for the KO are not my favorite. Oh wait, well, let's see. Black Coach is truly a magnificent model. That's nice. I might have to try one of those just to do something with it. The Beast of Chaos, Sigor, maybe want to pull my hair out. Really? Sigor. I guess, yeah, I guess I, I built the Gorgon. I didn't build the Sigor variant. What was difficult about the, the Sigor specifically? Is it the way the rock goes with his arms? Because, I, I mean, I built the other one, but... It all seemed fairly straightforward. But I know that just changing your the arms can change a lot. Mm, yep, that looks right. Just gonna glue him down on some points where he meets the model. Push him down in there. Deep in the saddle. And boom, we have ourselves a Chaos Sorcerer Lord on McManticore. Have you made a Astro Militarum or Militarum Tempestus army? Uh, I tried guard. Yes, to answer your question, I did. I had the Catachin kit. This is all way before the channel started. I had the Catachins and a few tanks. Some guy just wanted, he wanted to get out of... 40k and into um, War Machine, and I had some War Machine models. He basically just gave me a tackle box full of guard. Um, yeah, they went. They, I mean, you know, they were the old, old, old school. So they went together all right. Um, I did try building my own. Sorry, my head's in the way of the camera. Sorry. Uh, version of tanks and stuff like that, and honestly, I ran into more trouble with the instruction guide than I did the actual model. Like once. Um, once I actually built out the tank itself, like you can look at it and be like, okay, this actually was not a complicated kit, but the instructions were bad. Intuition Joe, what the crap I was watching total Warhammer memes and autoplay put me here. Well, welcome anyway. Uh, we, we do, uh, let's see, Warhammer stuff, but, uh, total Warhammer, we do every once in a while, uh, whenever I have a guest that likes to play it. I am exceptionally bad at it, so maybe that was the meme. Maybe this live show was the memes you made along the way. But yeah, I also play the actual tabletop variant, which may or may not interest you. Either way, you are welcome to be here. Uh, you will find a lovely bunch of people. Watching you build that mana core was super cathartic. <laughs> Oh, uh, it felt good, honestly. I like I like getting my backlog done. Okay, I'm gonna put that off to the side. Uh, let's see. How do you think they get spirits to host? They must be broken first. Exactly right. Uh, Mitch, Necropolis stalkers gluing the four faces together made my made the head of me broke. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of models, I hate to build. I built, so Games Workshop sent me, oh, what was it called? The, the first Ossiarch Bone Reapers and Maw Tribe set. I can't remember the name of it, but I tried building the two um, Archai, Morgast Archai. Um, those, those kits were terrible. They were just awful. Like I, I sat there with a bit and I was like, okay, I know this goes inside of his torso because it's like ghosts and that kind of stuff. And you can tell from the directions. It's like, but I just kept spinning it. And I'm like, I don't know how this goes into the rib cage. Like what, what? <laughs> I just sat there for a while staring at it. So yeah, intuition. Oh, I'm actually very familiar with two plus stuff. 
Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Hey, welcome. I, I take all kinds. So yeah, thank you. Thank you for watching. Uh, let's see. Feast of Bones. Okay, that's what it was. Yeah. Let's see. It's so satisfying when a Morgas part suddenly fits. <laughs> it's kind of like when you, uh, if you guys have ever watched the docking of a spaceship to the ISS space station, International Space Station, where it's like you see like these two cables and they come together and it takes like half an hour and you're just like, I didn't realize that something moving half a mile an hour could be so suspenseful. And it's just like two plugs, just click. And then you're like, yes. <laughs> and that's how the docking procedure starts. Uh, I'm not, I am not emotionally prepared to build 10 nights. Well, maybe we can get a start on some of this war shrine action. Let's see, it's pretty straightforward. Kevin Bacon scene in Apollo 13 with the beer bottle. Exactly. Yep. Uh, Bront, hey, became a patron a week or so ago. Thanks for the war cry advice. My local community tried it and we're all hooked. Aw, thank you. And my lady is on Daughters of Cain. Expect my submission about Gur. That is awesome, Bron. I'm so glad it panned out for you, buddy. Um, we're good for me until I got to the hands. I've never... I don't even think I made that far. <laughs> I was just like, I'm done. Uh, let's see. I. Hmm. How can I make him as undivided as possible? So I probably won't put any of the symbols. If you have used the book on the altar, swap the positions of the altar. Okay, so I definitely want to have the altar up there instead of the axe because my idolater stuff, like priests get all kinds of bonuses and stuff like that. So, yeah. Let's start it. Let me bust that guy out of the box. It's so weird that the uh, war altar or war shrine is just not a lot of pieces. Like, he wouldn't look like he would be that big, but he's a beefy dude. Uh, let's see, can someone please send me some hobby energy? This sofa is just too comfy. <laughs> I'll help you out. Uh, Jacob Foxy, go get a glass of ice water. Throw it at the couch, no reason. No warning. Just go ahead and do that. Just trust me. <laughs> uh, Doug, are you going to kit bash the war shrine on another mount? Uh, no, I always want to do one of the base model that Games Workshop puts out. And then, then I go and do a conversion one. Kind of want to have a better sense of what I want to do about it. Um, so I'm probably going to have one uh, that looks just like this. And the second one I might, uh, I don't know. I'm not sure what beast I want to put it on. <laughs> Transatlantic screams and coming. <laughs> oh man. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm thinking of building mine on a Pastilladon. <laughs> uh just, just don't spill too much water because you might end up sleeping on that couch, Jacob. <laughs> it's got to be highly targeted. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so... Seven. Oh, there it is. Okay. Well, that was a horrible Christmas gift. <laughs> oh, man. You know, help looks like a lot of different things. Sometimes help is a cold glass of water to motivate you. <laughs> Building KO frigate boats part right now. About to prime the sub assemblies. I 
I don't do very many sub assemblies, but I did one on that chariot that I uh, showed off earlier, my, my chaos chariot. I can't imagine fully building that model and then painting it, which is kind of a shame because I have three more to do. And uh, I won't lie, that one was kind of soul crushing. <laughs> Honestly, what it comes down to is I just don't like painting horses. Like I'm really bad at painting Games Workshop horses because they tend to have a lot of just really open space and like rounded edges. So there's just not a lot of detail to work with and I tend to like more like busy or organic shapes. Um, yeah, I don't know. If anyone has any suggestions on how to, how to paint horses, Quickly and effectively. I er, no, it kind of took off a lot more than I was hoping to. Uh, we'll hear them. Okay, you guys are the best. <laughs> Help looks like a lot of different things. Exactly. <laughs> See you later, Hugh. Oh uh, man, I'm not sure you could paint KO boats without sub assembly. Yeah, uh, I did it once because I got it already built. I don't know if you're sensing a theme here, um, but yeah, it, it was fine. <laughs> oh man. You two crack me up. <laughs> but hopefully we're painting. We're painting, we're moving. Ooh, look at that. Man, there's something glorious about a kit that's so well designed that it literally snaps together. Like, a lot of things say they snap fit, but like, I don't know if you guys heard that through the mic, which is literally just boom. Okay, then we got number eight. I moved and you're now at least facing a model. There you go. I don't have any more tips beyond that. I feel like I, uh, I'm i on the, the verge of burning a bridge here, so. <laughs> yeah, let's see, nine and 10. Here we go. Yeah, I think, I think I'm gonna play, I wanna try it at least, uh, playing as idolaters and then, um, using the battalion where you can take basically everything I own um, plus up like two or oh, sorry one or more war shrines and every I think it's every hero phase you roll a die for every unit and so many inches of it and on a six they take more wounds and so it's inconsistent because obviously it's on a six but it's also every unit so you will get something and honestly the idea is more just to lower drops and that kind of stuff because I think focusing on war shrines is thematic to the idolater thing, you know? Uh, let's see, is this, are you finally going to do a KO war shrine kit bash? Oh my God, that sounds so ambitious. <laughs> so crazy ambitious. Let's see. Not looking forward to painting my Adeptus Mechanicus. Even the troops really need subs because they're cloaks and legs. Yeah, I um, I tried Mechanicus for a hot second and it wasn't so much that I didn't like the models. I did like the models. They are incredibly pretty. It was more just like, this requires more detail than than my level of painting is willing to give at this exact second. I was like, I am going to get so burnt out on these guys if I try and go forward, so I'm just gonna not. <laughs> and that's pretty much, that was my small um, foray into Admech. I was just like, this looks like it will break me. And um, if I'm gonna get broken, it's gonna be like, I don't know, from some cool model, some bigger centerpiece model like Archeon or something. Which I have never actually owned. I've painted an Archeon. I did it for my roommate um, at one point. But I have never actually painted or owned my own Archeon. 
So that probably needs to change. Let's see. There we go. Boom. Mario Kart complete. Should I do a custom Necron Dynasty or should I actually choose one? For me, I like choosing ones, but there's no wrong answer. No wrong answer. What are we building? Now we're building, oh, yes, his pedal stool. Yes, let's see here. Is that three? Okay, so we need this. Forty-six, which is just some kind of weird beam. I don't really know how that one fits into this. Metal legs on bases by themselves. Yeah, yeah, that could do it. Yeah, I, I just, I wanted to do, when I did my ad mech, I wanted to do, oh, what was it? I th whatever the orange themed one is, I think it's Ryza. Um, really liked that striking scheme because it, it kind of lend itself to the, the Blanche-esque type thing. And that's what I wanted to do for my ad mech. And then I got a few models in and I was like, this is murder. <laughs> Here we go, four and five. Metallica, maybe it was Metallica. I thought Metallica had was had white. And that was their thing, but I could be I could be getting those backwards. I just know that Ryza is also um, Ryza Rust is the orange dry brush paint, so that's maybe where my brain went. So I could be wrong. Ryza is the rusty orange theme. Yes, yep, that's what I wanted to do. Honestly, I, I probably know more 40k factions by um, the Citadel paint their names come from than I actually do like <laughs> the actual lore behind the faction. I also did say um I I described a color as Elysian green the other day and my wife was just like what the hell is that? <laughs> like, oh yes, that's from the uh, Warhammer crayons color line. Ignore me. <laughs> Why do I partake in 40k discussions? I am so sorry. No, you're good, man. It's good. Anyway, everyone. No one uh, should be afraid to be mistaken here, man. Jump in the conversation. Plus, let's be honest. Metallica is the coolest name conceivable for a 40k faction of any kind, right? Like, can we just acknowledge that, like, Everything is somehow inferior to that, just by nature of not being named Metallica. <laughs> um, hmm. Oh, I see, I see. That seems like a weird, awkward set. Nope. Ah, that would explain it. A little bit of a notch there. I was like, that should sit in pretty flush. Oh, let's see. You're 100% correct on the Metallica front. This has been the reason I remembered it. Yes, probably. And that's, you know, again, why it's the best. Aha, Doug, you had the part upside down. That probably would have helped. <laughs> Again, easy when you know how. All right. To this guy, throw our random pole that I'm sure has a very good purpose. I gotta say, in other random news, one good thing about uh, the 2020 COVID Christmas uh, is um, I am not burnt out on Christmas music already because I 
have not been out enough in retail spaces to get tired of it. So that's actually, that's a, you know, I'm going to call that a secret bonus. <laughs> I don't have a disdain for Mariah Carey yet. I mean, that passes. How can you not like Mariah Carey? You know, it's whatever. It's kind of like saying you like Beyonce. It's like, get out of here. <laughs> Usually around this time, Michael Buble has come out of his cave and uh, I'm already sick of him. I've already yelled multiple times about him just being a, the Coke Zero version of Frank Sinatra. And uh, I'm already tired of it. But you know what? Not this year. <laughs> That's actually a really good point on Christmas music. Yeah, I was just like listening to it. I went um, to the grocery store yesterday and it was blaring. I don't know why they had it cranked so loud. I don't, you know, no matter what kind of year we would have had, there was no need for it to be that loud. But whatever. They're blasting um, my least favorite song, which is uh, Santa Baby. I don't know why. It's just we don't gotta make him sexy. Can we just have something that's just not sexy? As a culture, as a society. We live in a society. We don't need everything to be sexy. Anyway, Santa Baby was playing and I was like, huh, I'm actually not um, filled with visceral rage like I normally would be around, you know, the 17th of December. <laughs> I would say the Pepsi version of Frank Sinatra, Coke Zero is still Coke. <laughs> uh, let's see. They don't have you attach this yet, though, I don't think. Got that. Uh, then we gotta build a bookshelf. Can we have anything new? <laughs> new Christmas music? I think every year somebody tries. They're like, we're gonna get Justin Bieber. He's gonna sing the next classic. And then everyone's just like, no. <laughs> Mankind unanimously just goes, nah. Oh, you know what? I, I think the last new thing to come out was probably Pentatonix as a tradition. Um, and I can't, I can't stand Pentatonix. I'll be honest with you. I don't, I just, not a fan. I don't, I don't know why. Just quartet, that kind of stuff. I just never, never dug it. That's my burden to bear. <laughs> uh, Rick Astley released a new Christmas song. Are you kidding me? That's what we need. We need old rockers, right? I know that, um, oh, no, I can't remember his name. Foo Fighters. Uh, oh, dang it. I don't know why I can't think of his name. I'm blanking. Dave Grohl. He's been uh, super uh, awesome online, like playing Christmas music and like hopping on like TikTok with people and that kind of stuff. Oh, he's just, uh, he's the best. We take a moment to appreciate the fact that UK managed to get Rage Against the Machine to Christmas number one in the charts. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Are you serious? That makes me the happiest. <laughs> I feel like, what's what's an American version of that? Like, they have that same kind of, I feel like Freebird by Leonard Skinner would be a really, like, American Christmas, right? Like, that's, that's what we need during these worry sometimes. <laughs> we just need the <laughs> We are a joke country in the best way. Oh, that's amazing. That makes me so happy. I feel like y'all are so much more fun than America. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> We're fine. We're fine. I feel like you're more fun. Okay, so where does this go? Um, okay, so it doesn't really matter. Hmm. Oh, I guess the, sorry, I'm looking at this and there's not a whole lot of instruction on 
part about this thing, but it looks like it doesn't truly matter. The hole only matters for the ax that goes in there, so that's all right. Just a hot sec, I'll hop back in the chat. You should totally move here. Oh man, I would. You got the climate that I love. Which is to say, rain. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Uh, recently want Silver Tower and Blackstone Fortress box games. Scuttling and Spindle Drones are my latest obsession. Nice! Cody asks, hey, what's the opening theme song to your 2 Plus Tough logo? That was actually custom made for me. Um, if you look at the community page, and that should be either the last or the second to last thing that I posted, uh, one of my patrons on Patreon actually reached out to me. He's like, hey, like, I, I want to get into music design. Yeah, I think he's in school for it. And um, he just asked if he could make my logo, uh, my logo, my uh, intro thing that I would use. And um, if I would just, you know, promote his channel. So please go check it out. I think he has one or two vids up there. But uh, he wants to basically get into music design for ambient sounds for like people who play D&D and background games and that kind of stuff. So it's really cool. Um, yeah, so go check it out. Catch the fever. All right, here we go. We got... 18, 19, 20. 19. 20. Looking for the fire. Here we go. You did an awesome job, Love Green Show. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. It's glad to hear that feedback. Yeah, it's, um, I tried to put like a movie little thing that went with it and I, I, mean, I want to keep rejiggering it, but I love the sound. Yeah. Boom, boom. Okay, crank these. They can make Florida into the next Warhammer Quest game. <laughs> Objective survival, exactly. Oh man, can you imagine if like you play Silver Tower, right? But instead of reading like the flavor text of whatever event happens in the next dungeon area, it's like a news article of like Florida Man. Like instead of like a blue horror pops out and you know, begins torturing you with his sorcerous ways. It's just like Florida Man runs naked and punches an alligator. And there's just like a little free guild guy with like an alligator necklace or something like that. Like something ridiculous. Oh man, that would be the greatest game ever made. That's the thing. You know, I get uh, questions from people who are like, how do I, um, how do I craft like a good enough story, you know, for all, for all these things? And I'm like, what are you talking about, man? Real life is weirder than anything you're going to come up with on your own. Just like, just Google search something weird and it'll work for you. <laughs> uh, Travis, what am I building? I am building a chaos war shrine. It's only Florida man and if it involves meth. Well, you know. <laughs> we'll call it what uh what do they call it in Necromunda? Because they can't say drugs and sell in some countries. They use ghost or whatever, or something like that. Some they have a they have a alternate drug name so they don't have to say like drugs. <laughs> Stims is another one you see a lot. Florida hammer. I'd love it. Oh, uh, man. Man robs gun store with bag of squirrels. Absolutely. Yes. This is the stuff I'm here for, right? It's like... Yes, we all need, you know, health care and to see our family and loved ones again. But at a certain point, you know what we really need? Florida man. <laughs> He's all of us. He's me. He's you.
And I think bringing that into Warhammer would be amazing. Oh, missed one. Sweet. Uh, let's see. Hey, Doug, first time catching you live. Thank you so much for the lore video today. Uh, for the lore videos, they are truly amazing. Thank you so much, buddy. Absolutely happy to. Love doing it. I'm excited for this uh, next week. I, um, because it's the holidays, I'll have a little bit more free time to be able to stop and like come up with basically what I do, uh, in case anyone's curious. I put together like a massive list of like show topics. And uh, then I just work through that. And then, you know, when that runs out, I stop. I do it again. And so I'm actually in the process. So, hey, if you guys want to see anything, throw it in the chat. I'll write it down. But I'm in the process right now of doing that exact thing of going through and creating like, basically what's going to be the content for the next couple months. The only one I really want to focus on is, like, getting started. So, like, getting started with AOS lore, getting started, you know, caught up with everything. The meth squirrel in his Alabama, though. <laughs> Florida man may make a great orc. Yeah, absolutely. What realm would the free city of Florida exist in, though? Uh, I mean, if they somehow set up a city in the eight points, that's what I'm going to say. <laughs> Let's see. So this guy, he has an option to have his handout... Or a sword, and I want him to kind of focus on the priestly side of things. I'm gonna put the hand, like he's a he's preaching. Mid preach. I do wish there was something else he could be holding besides the severed head, though. Which is a fun sentence that I'm sure has just put me on some kind of watch list. I'm alright with that. Alright, now we're building the bro on top. Greywater fastness is Florida. <laughs> ah, you know, yeah. I think if they set up a city in the eight points at some point, that would be that to me is I like, is peak Florida. It's just pure and utter chaos. All the dumb stories that you can read that happen, like of chaos champions, I don't know, trying to ascend to glory and then dying fruitlessly. I've actually been rereading Call of Archeon, uh, which is a series of short stories on um, Kindle because I bought it forever ago and I was just like, you know what? Like, I needed a little mental break. And I was like, I remember these stories making me happy. So I was just rereading them and they they deliver. <laughs> They're good. And it was just like chaos champions all like fumbling over each other and just being dumb. And I just love it. Like, that's what chaos is about. Good evening, Doug. Uh, you are the reason I have an army or iron jaws with your lore videos. Oh, thank you so much, buddy. I'm glad you like them. Uh, let's see. Is the eight points hot enough for Florida? I would imagine so, right? Isn't the Bloodwind spoil like desert and crap? I would think so. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say confidently. There's at least a Florida-esque corner. Where if you're going to build a free city, the free city of Floridia, uh, that's where it would be. <laughs> but if somebody can make a compelling um, gore, uh, gur story, sorry, I would be all about that as well. I'm actually going to wait on his head until I can tell what angle he's going to be sitting at. I don't know why I just thought of that now. Because I don't want him to like look too far down. Hey Doug, have you ever done a prime primer on Warcry and how its campaign actually works? I have not, but that is a fantastic idea for a video. A 
We must write the history of the free city of Florida. Oh, man. I would be down for that. What, so, all the other free cities, they kind of have like an iconic gimmick, right? Like, hey, you know, Anvil Guard is like all about the seedy underbelly, dark elf stuff. Like, what are the units that would really exemplify the free city of Florida in in the um, Cities of Sigmar specifically book? That's, I think, I think a good place to start. Also, without a sword in his hand, this guy looks like he just pulled a head out of a set, like a, like a, like a hat, like a magic trick. And he's just like, ta-da! I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> um, but intuition, that's a great idea. I'm going to write that down right now. Let me just pull up a little word doc here. Full primer on. Sweet, good idea. Um, Florida would require order serpentis. That is that is actually a super valid point. <laughs> Florida would be the corrupted, swampy, Nurgle parts of Giran. Interesting. That's also good. Flagellants. I would say flagellants. Yeah. Hey Doug, greetings from Spain. Thanks for the great videos, man. Uh, you really seem to know much. Oh, buddy, I have you fooled, but thank you. We'd love to see some painting videos about Lumineth or Iron Jaws. Okay. I will do my best to get some models for those, yeah. I mean, if nothing else, like I can do the, um, oh, what are they called? Uh, Underworld's Warbands, for sure. Because, you know, if all you need is like a couple models for, for demonstration purposes, those are perfect. I can't help but feel fire slayers would have a strong presence in the realm of Florida. <laughs> oh, yeah. They probably would. It's warm enough. My God. I think they'd be also somewhat at peace with um, the beasts of chaos in the area. Kind of like how all Floridians are just fine knowing that there's like alligators not far away, which terrifies me to death. Like I don't have I don't have many phobias, but um, I'm gonna say being eaten to death, like something actually eating me, is a phobia that I have. Forty-two. I was um, on a fishing thing when I was in um, high school. We were in the Gulf, and um, sure enough, I went down to pull my lure out, and um, the guy I was on the boat with just grabbed my shoulder, pulled me back, and you could see the gator. He was looking. He was coming right from my arm as my hand was reaching down for the lure. And this guy just pulled me back. And ever since that moment, I was like, <laughs> nope, nobody, nope, nobody, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> oh, man. One in Florida, one in, one in four Florida units is a fire slayer. <laughs> It's just a naked guy pumped up full of, uh, you know, foreign things he's put into his body. Yes, absolutely. Like drugs and stuff. Okay. Oh, hell yeah, knowing those literal dinosaurs are walking around you in Florida is insane. But you know what's so funny is everybody has their thing. Like, like, I feel like every part of the world is deeply fascinated that life exists in other parts of the world. For example, I moved to Seattle. And people were like, oh, you're from Iowa? Like, aren't you, like, perpetually scared of tornadoes? And I, I'm like, no. You know you guys live, like, next to an active volcano, right? Isn't that super worrisome? They're like, no. <laughs> Mount St. Helens, which has blown up in our lifetime. And he's like, no? Like, okay, so it seems like, maybe, everyone's fine where we are. <laughs> the second you leave, you can't fathom how other people live. Again, living next to gators? Nope. But I know people who are there are like, eh, it's whatever, just don't, don't bother them. <laughs> Ooh, Seraphon might be a bet, a pretty good choice. Let's 
It's like, I remember as a kid thinking that lava was going to be everywhere. We would jump around on the couches being like, the floor is lava. And I was like, but like, I've never lived in a place where that was a sincere possibility. It's like, now I do. I need to think about that for a hot sec. There's a bit of a difference between people saying it's a lovely bird you have there in the UK. Robins are so cute. Like, that's a freaking dinosaur. Absolutely. This guy has some dainty hands. Just picked up Gloom Spite uh, by Andy Clark after the Nagash novels, which AOS novels would you recommend for someone new to AOS, but experienced with fantasy? Um, one book that I tend to really suggest to people uh, who come from fantasy is City of Secrets. And there's a, a follow-up novel that, that keeps those characters going. Um, but I always recommend that for former fantasy players simply because it feels like an old world novel. It's a very well written. It's fairly short, um, but it's just a, a great story about subterfuge in a city and uh it's really cool that's that would probably be my next recommendation what am i looking for 38 uh, i am not not seeing that one 38 this is the kind of high quality content y'all tune in for Oh, it's an arm. See, this is the kind of thing where it's like a side view, but you can't quite tell. But it's an arm just at a very weird angle. Thanks. <laughs> and we gotta pick a face from all the sad faces we can choose from. Um, I'm gonna go with the mutated grouchy face. That's what he is. I'm going to say this guy who was a chaos spawn and was forced into a life of hauling around this preacher on a war shrine, I'm going to say he's grouchy. Uh, let's see. Could be a free city near the Gur 8 point gate, for sure. That would make absolute sense. We know that there is one. If you're familiar with Gotrek and Felix, yep, Ghoul Slayer and Realm Slayer. Yeah, I, I did. I don't know if I, I did mention this earlier. I finally broke down and listened to Realm Slayer, uh, the audio drama, because people were asking for lore on Gotrek. And I liked it more than I thought I would, I'll be totally honest. Um, I will say, when uh, Gotrek put... Oh, wait, it's all three heads. It's not even just one. Okay, that's what I was missing. Uh, I will say, when Gotrek put the... This is not really a spoiler, it's, it's kind of a thing you can see on his model, but he put a rune in him, like a fire slayer in himself, and um, the voice actor, Brian Blessed, screams for three minutes straight, and I audibly yelled, shut up. <laughs> and I was just like, you are just yelling now. We have surpassed the level of voice acting. Cool. Well documented. We know it hurts. Stop. Skipped ahead a few seconds, um, but I thought overall it was it was actually a very good story. So I, I will, uh, you know, relent and, and, and give the people what they want. Go trick lore. Uh, let's see. Um, Agent Nagash. Hey Doug, have you thought about doing a lore video on why Nagash is the most superior god of AOS? Uh, I can make that really quickly and just say, like, he's honest. All the rest of them lie. He's just like, nope, you mean nothing, you're worth nothing, and you're going to serve me. <laughs> and you're just like, well, I, uh, I don't have a rebuttal. <laughs> kind of seems like everyone who does have a rebuttal ends up being dead and serving him anyway. So it's like, he ain't wrong. <laughs> there you go. That's my that's my quick pitch for why Nagash is, is the best god is because he just doesn't even mince words or anything. He's just like, this, this is where we're at. I'm better than you. And um, the world's a mess and I just need to rule it. <laughs> Full uh, Dr. Horrible style. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. So we got a back, this, and a weird chunky boy face. Okay. Um, try not to lose the chat here. Sorry. Um, Must admit, I prefer the old world Go Trick audiobooks. Never read any of them, but I've heard good things. I've heard great things, actually. I I do feel like, um, honestly, I thought it would be longer if I'm given like a full review to be, you know, you know how people have been pining for me to review a audiobook that's been out for years and I've just been too stubborn to listen to. The problem is, it's not that it's about Go Trick. It's that I don't like audio dramas, and I don't mind audio books. Like I actually prefer audio books over over taking the time to read because I can do it while I'm hobbying. But audio dramas where it's all the sword clashing sounds, like it becomes very audio uh, overwhelming for me in terms of audio. I'm trying to think how to word that. Um, you know, trying to focus on what people are saying while they're like smashing faces and stuff like that it gets a little bit to be a lot and almost induces stress in me um but you know i got through it it was good i just thought it would, long, it would be longer i didn't realize the last hour of the audiobook was just an interview with brian, brian blessed as he tries to um talk about go trek in a way that doesn't reveal that he doesn't know a dang thing about warhammer uh which he failed at <laughs> spectacularly like in the only way that like a really really sweet person who's trying to you know make make this character feel important and special can but there was one time he's like go trick's amazing because he's like you know walked amongst the dinosaurs in the days of old biblical times with the narrowfim cephalim walking amongst the daughters of man and you're like what the hell are you talking about this has nothing to do with game workshop but i applaud the effort. <laughs> you, sir, get an A. <laughs> uh, let's see. Kind of wish some old fantasy gods existed in AOS. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Dr. Horrible, yes. <laughs> uh, Kingbred, you asked, <clears throat> sorry, you asked why Sigmar doesn't do anything anymore. <coughs> sorry, I don't know what happened there. Um, forgot how to breathe. Uh, essentially, uh, he when he lost Galmaraz to Archeon and Zinch's trickery during the Battle of the Burning Skies, he was like, my hot-headedness is not helping anything or anyone. And so at that point, he decided to take a, a different role in the army. So he is doing things in the sense of he's actively infusing mortals with his power and creating Stormcast Eternals. Like, all of that is his power channeled into them. Um, and, you know, hearing prayers and shooting warriors where they need to be, all that kind of stuff. But he doesn't <clears throat> walk the battlefields anymore because... Things just don't seem to go right for him when he does, which, you know, <clears throat> fair enough. Let's see, we got 51. Okay, half my Necron gun casings are done. What? What kit is that for, the gun casings? Is that... <clears throat> Sorry, I don't know what happened <clears throat> to my throat. I apologize. There we go. Whatever I was choking on. Just choking on air. It must have been a bubble or something. And tentacle arm. See, here's the thing. These guys who are carrying this war shrine look more like Chaos Spawn than the actual spawn models. Like if you've played Vermintide or you watched when I was playing it, and a Chaos Spawn barrels onto the screen, like it just takes up the entire scene. And it's amazing looking. And these guys do a way better job at representing like these big old nasty like flesh hulks just bounding around than the actual Chaos Spawn models. Speaking of which, that's something I need to go find. I need to find the third party 
spawn models. I had a bunch of the GW ones when I had my Beast of Chaos army. And um, decided I'm never painting those again. <laughs> Basically. I just didn't like the way they came together. That's not true. Some of them were good, but I, I wanted to diversify how they all looked instead of having like a copy of the same model. And I only really liked the way I put together like one or two of them. And amongst all the bits options, like, eh, there should be more that I liked in that. Doug, I am batch painting 20 Necron Warriors in the most convoluted scheme. I love it. Light just went out. Give me a hot sec here. I'm almost done anyway, but might as well have some some good lighting while we finish. La, here we go. Uh, let's see. I mean, if Nagash has ever got the souls, how is it stealing? <laughs> how is it? Yeah, how is it stealing? from the bank if it never had the money. Whoa. I think that's right. It doesn't feel right, but it looks right. I think, I think most of him is built. It's just a matter of kind of bringing it all together, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so we got our burly dude carriers. We are... Uh, let's see, don't get Doug started on vampire pirates. <laughs> Um, Alan Foster, did you catch Vince's Warhammer Weekly this week? If so, any thoughts? Um, <laughs> uh, that's funny. Um, so yeah, actually, so I, I, I never catch that show live because I like to have something to watch on Thursdays. Um, so yes, I did watch it. I watched it retroactively. Uh, loved it. Thought it was a great conversation. Clint from, um, oh, is it Face Hammer? I'm so sorry. I feel like an absolute loser for not knowing the answer to that. But, uh, no, I thought they had a wonderful guest. Uh, Clint is awesome. And so, uh, asking the question, like, what do I think about vampires? I, you know, I make, I poke fun. Yeah, I don't know if you guys know, but I have a couple of yucks here and there. Um, about vampires and honestly if they came out i would be very excited right i mean i don't my my issue is less to do with i don't like the idea of vampires and more to do with i see so much discussion surrounding them that i worry that people will get their hopes up and then ultimately just be salty and disappointed and insufferable if i'm honest with you <laughs> which does happen you know, I mean, we look at, like, the release of, like, Lumineth, where people were like, oh, yeah. I mean, part of that was a Games Workshop marketing error when they kept building up, like, they're high elves in Age of Sigmar, and then their range came out, and you're like, well, I mean, they kind of are, but they weren't really what we were expecting, and people got real salty and disappointed about that. <clears throat> so my point is, you know, whenever people really start getting their hopes up, that's when I... I don't check out, but I do kind of like distance a little bit. I'm like, hmm, I can see a storm brewing. Um, it's probably the best way to put that. So, let's see. I forgot this thing had sides. <laughs> so that's kind of my thought. But, um, yeah, so I was, but as far as like the actual idea of having, first of all, I really want a soul blight army i don't i don't care if it's vampires i want vamp uh, sorry vampire pirates is what i meant <clears throat> i want vampires in general i want um what i really want if like to get me into death it's very easy here's all they have to do uh drop a soul blight book 
and it's just a couple of really cool vampire kits. Doesn't need a whole lot, you know, uh, just repurpose or re-war scroll arise a lot of the stuff that they already have for soul blights. Give me a few new kits like heroes and maybe like two or three of those like elite five man units that they seem to like. And new zombies. If you give me new zombies, I'm in like Flynn, right? Like I, I don't care what theme they are. I don't care if they're pirate zombies. I don't care. They could be like, you know, middle management executives with dad bods zombies and I wouldn't care. I'd be all in. So, uh, yeah. And that's honestly, and I said this earlier, and I'm not sure if you were uh, watching at that time, but I had said um, watching that episode was the closest I've ever gotten to. Like, I, I went onto the Manic website and looked at zombies because their zombies are so good. Their zombie sculpts are awesome. And I was like, I could do a zombie army. That's all I want. Just one zombies nothing else <laughs> um but yeah in answer to your question like i i, I honestly i make i make memes and, and poke fun because everyone's kind of getting their hopes up and i want to rein it in a little bit but i really i truly do want a soul blight army to get me into death well that's the thing is i've never played a death faction never like you say that you say it's not hard but no other book has been able to do it. <laughs> no more cow helmets. <laughs> all we know, we need to double down on the cow helmets. We need all of the cow helmets. Uh, let's see. So yeah, I don't know. Some people mistook my memes for being like, these are stupid. Like, no, whatever they come out with, I'll be excited for. And I won't say I'm, I'm gonna play whatever they come out with, but I, I do think um, Vampire, as a as a, a narrative idea, vampires are like the coolest. Just because I like hero-centric armies. I really do, like that's, I mean, it's why I love, I keep coming back to chaos because the idea of all these heroes being on a little path to glory is just the coolest thing to me. Because it's just, it you know, it takes these massive sweeping worlds that are so hard to comprehend and boils it down to a single story. You know, one guy's ascension is a single story. Uh, and I, I love that. And vampires allow that, right? It's these huge, you know, death armies that are like, instilling fear and power all corners of the realms but at the end of the day it's just a handful of vampires doing it all right and like their intrigue and their tales of you know uh how they hate each other and are constantly vying for power and status like that's what drives things forward it's not the ten thousand zombie models you have to own <laughs> or the skeleton warriors or whatever it's it's the story of just a few No vampires, please. Just cool soul blight. Yeah, you know, I, I can't tell what their intention is. Like, I mean, my, I guess my fundamental question when it comes to specifically, like, the, the pirate aesthetic for vampires is how much it, it'll be a great litmus test for how much they are willing to base content and stuff off of the old world in terms of you know, if you don't know, vampires, they really are a legitimate thing. You can play them in Total War. Um, but that's not for everybody. You know what I mean? And so it's like, how much are they willing to reuse that property in AOS? We don't quite have a great answer, to be honest with you. Okay, wait, how does this go? Hmm. Just a second, I'm just figuring out how this fits in because again, it's got a really bad picture. Hmm. 
Hmm. Okay, yeah, that side is engulfed. Okay. I'm trying to, like, measure it out by how engulfed in flames one of the sides is over the other. We got it. Okay. But I'm just going to hold this for a second. I'll check out the chat here. I would buy vampires. I would buy just about any death army, though, because they are my absolute favorite faction. Nice. No, I love it. I love it. B uh, vampires would get me into it. In the words of Zozies, e each night before bed, I just want blood nights. <laughs> I'm going to say that's not much to ask for. That's all I'm asking for. Okay, here we go. Okay. They have a lot of items from Total War that are not actual models, or the Total War units look so much better. Hmm. And that's kind of the thing. I, I wonder how much they're going to take from Total War, simply because um, it has to be stuff that translates well into miniatures. And I feel like so many miniatures transfer well from tabletop to game, but not all will translate from game to tabletop, if that makes sense. For example, like, you'll get the Skaven Doom Wheel. Um, and, like, that is a baller model. But when you see it in Total War in motion, it's another level. Like, it's just so cool. But my question is, does that work both ways? Can you have a model that looks so cool in Total War that has never had a tabletop, like an official, you know, Games Workshop designed tabletop thing, would it translate well to the tabletop? format in a static model and I'm, I'm sure that's just a, a hurdle that their design team has to work with Love the lack of context here. There's usually a listen to Nagash audiobook. Oh, that's funny. No, black, no, no, yeah. The less context, the better for, for sweeping statements like that. Arguably, the Vampire Coast faction from Total War is far more in line with the... I don't know what OTT. AOS style? I uh, love it. Oh, over the top. Over the top. Okay. Sorry. I was like... I was like going through my head like acronyms in my mind and I was like... Halo ODST. Parent teacher conferences. Okay, okay. Oh snap, so close. Now yeah, we actually gotta put this sucker together. Okay, tentacle boy is in the back. That's that's not good. You don't want him in the back. Okay, and then let's see. If I can do this without the use of profanity. Okay, here we go. Because sometimes the only thing that holds a model together is profanity. I'm just going to throw that out there. Stronger than a plastic glue. But I see exactly where it's going to meet up on here. <clears throat> uh, I just think about the floating sea turtle. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, you are quite all right. No need to apologize. Yep, yep. This is going to be an awkward one because he is not held on there very well. And as for this guy... Where 
where is he supposed to go? Let's see. He holds that bit right there, it looks like. Sorry, I went a little quiet there. This one requires a little bit because, again, the, I feel like the picture's at a very strange angle. So they tell you where one hand goes, but not like where the other arm sits. And it's just a little bit weird. Hmm, wish there was a picture from the other side, because like, I get <clears throat> that his hand rests oh, wait, there's a line, okay. Well, that's about right. It looks right enough, so I'm just going to throw a tiny bit down and we'll stand him upright, see if we can get him to actually stand. Because really that's the only test that matters, right, is if it's level. <clears throat> Wouldn't it be better to build that in sub-assemblies? Um, yeah, you're right. And, uh, you know, a smarter man than me would absolutely do that. But, I am not that man this day. No, you are correct, but honestly, there's so much open room between these bodies, uh, I'm not super worried about it. Yep, that's level, so we're good. Okay. I might, uh, I'm probably gonna leave off the, um, the leader though. The only thing I need to do for him is stand him on there just to kind of see where his head looks best, like in terms of like what angle as far as looking down goes but uh yeah because i want to be able to have the room to get in there and get those skulls down down in there so these will be painted up by next week maybe i don't know we'll see honestly i've been doing a lot of video game streams lately but i really just miss painting like I, you know, I, I kind of go, like, a lot of us in kind of, like, ebbs and flows and that kind of stuff where sometimes you're just not in the mood to paint, as was. And if you don't have someone who loves you enough to throw ice-cold water at you, you know, it gets a little bit difficult to get motivated. But, um... Okay, yeah, I got, I got a sense now what angle he should be. But, uh, yeah, so I've just been playing a lot of games lately, but I do want to get back into painting more and more. He goes up on the top part. If you use the book on the altar, swap positions of the altar. Oh, that's a cool idea. Yeah, I like that. So it suggests if you use the book, then you put the book up there and then he's like down here reading it. I think that looks awesome. Yeah, we're gonna do that. <laughs> or some wonderful hobby people to encourage cajole get said partner to throw the water exactly yeah yeah you know it's a community effort sweet so he is done been built i'm not going to put any of the um god specific iconography on there because the whole point is undivided and so yeah we're gonna have a sweet altar with a book on it and he's gonna be there reading you know how you like to read with a severed head you know as a bookmark or something um sounds rad <laughs> so he'll be doing that what's cool is that in idolaters all priests get the uh i think leader or hero keyword so he will actually be a hero so that's cool um and then we got bits and bobs chains i'll throw those on later because i'm not really worried about it right now but anyway, you could also put on all four. Um, I'm using a few of them in other projects, but yes, I know what you mean. 
Looks great. I'm impressed in your work tempo. Oh, I can build stuff pretty quickly. I mean, and honestly, these older kits go together much quicker than anything newer. Like, I did both of these probably faster than it took me to build my Corvus Cabal because that the Harvey Birdman uh, model is just a pain to get his torso to put together. Yeah, so we got two big models built. I'm excited about them, less excited about building the 10 knights I have, but we'll get there. <laughs> this community is the best, thank you all. I can't help but agree. I'm gonna go ahead and end, uh, and hop off here for the day. Let me throw my light back at me. Thank you all so much for joining me. Uh, it was a wonderful day of getting just some hobby done. And uh, I hope, I don't know, even though it's a more low key day, I hope you enjoyed yourselves and you got some stuff done too. I will be doing some more painting streams as we tackle these guys. Now that I kind of feel more comfortable with like the paint scheme I'm doing, uh, I'm happy to show it on air. So you can all take a look at it and, and poke fun at my hobby changing ways. So anyway, thank you all so much. I'll talk to you later and uh, have yourselves a wonderful day. Happy Wargaming.